All right, folks, uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. Um, our presentation is a preparedness, emergency preparedness type topic. Uh, Ralph Gilly is going to be speaking with us about firearm safety. Ralph is from Big Stone Gap, Virginia. He's a certified NRA firearms instructor. He's also, he and his wife, uh, Leslie, also farm, have horses and, and goats. And uh, they're Extension Leadership Council members here in Wise County. And, and Ralph, I appreciate you talking with us this evening. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Phil. Um, Phil kind of introduced me, but uh, I've been teaching firearm safety for probably 20 years, uh, trying to help people learn how to shoot safely. Um, but tonight, I really want to just discuss basic firearm safety, especially for children. Um, the NRA has a fantastic program called the Eddie Eagle Program. Um, the Eddie Eagle Gun Safe Program is a gun accident prevention program that seeks to help parents, law enforcement, community groups, and educators navigate a topic paramount to our children's safety. Eddie and his wing team are on a mission to help you teach pre-K through fourth graders what to do if they ever come across a gun. And it's also very helpful to anyone that is unfamiliar with gun owners or that are unfamiliar with firearms at any age uh, that anyone can learn from this program. The first thing we want to teach the child or person uh, is to stop. The first step is, is crucial. Stopping allows the child time that he or she needs to remember the rest of the safety instructions. The second step is to don't touch the gun. A farm that is not touched or disturbed is unlikely to be fired or otherwise endanger your child or other people. Third is to run away. This removes the temptation to touch the farm as well as the danger that another person may nick, nick negligently cause it to fire. Excuse me there, I get tongue tied here. Last is number four, tell a grown up where the gun is. Children should seek a trustworthy adult, neighbor, relative, or teacher if a parent or guardian is not available. And if you'd like to know more, uh, the number you can call, and Phil's gonna put this up at the end of the program, uh, but I'll go ahead and read it now. Uh, the number to call is 800. 231-0752, or you can email, oh, he's got it here. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Eddie at nrahq.org, and they will be more than happy to get information for you. Any questions about the Eddie Eagle program? Where was that started, Ralph? Is it, is it a national thing or is it national thing through the nra uh i don't have i think it started in 19 i want to say 1985 field but i'm not could could be a little later net uh um i'd have to check back on that to make sure but it is a national program uh should in in my opinion should be taught in every uh pre-k school in the country um uh, with the gun violence that we have nowadays, uh, anyone can find a gun firearm somewhere and they need to know how to get away from it, get away from the danger of it, so. Okay. Well, hearing no other questions, we'll move into our uh, basic new shooter uh, seminar. Tonight we're gonna, okay, you can move on now, Phil. Today's program will cover gun safety, gun storage, types of firearms and their parts, magazines, ammunition, sites, what to expect at the range, what you need at the range, cleaning your gun, and also other NRA courses. The seminar goals for tonight is to highlight the basic knowledge, skills, and attitude essential for selecting, safely handling, and storing and cleaning a firearm. Gun safety. Gun safety is everyone's responsibility. 
The three most important rules of gun safety are always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use. Now, I'm going to demonstrate with a our blue gun here some of the things I've just spoke about. You always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. And, and every situation dictates where that safe direction can be. Where I'm at tonight in this room, I know there's no one, there's not a any anyone under me. So safe direction for me here would be to be pointed down. Um, and I, if you were in a second story situation, down would not necessarily be the most safe place. Maybe up would, might be the safe place. But typically down is always better if, if no one's under you. Second is always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. We always train that, I hope everyone can see this well, keep your trigger finger somewhere on the frame till you're actually ready to press the shot. And you can go from here to here in a millisecond. It takes no time at all to go from here to here. Number three is always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to use it. Uh, you cannot be safe enough around firearms, so make sure the gun is not loaded. And if you go to any gun store, you can ask anybody there how many times that someone will always bring a gun in, especially a semi-automatic, and they will take the magazine out of the gun, but they will forget to take a round out of the chamber. So uh, I'll demonstrate on our other real firearm here. You know, always open the action to see that there's nothing in the chamber. Okay, we'll move along. Other rules to keep in mind. Know your target and what is beyond. Know how to use the gun safely. Please get some instruction if you're, if you're before you start down your firearm path. Be sure the gun is safe to operate. Again, check with a knowledgeable source about the gun. Only use the correct ammunition for your gun. Any firearm, modern firearm, will have on the barrel or on the frame what type of ammunition that that gun needs. And if you're not familiar with it, please go to a knowledgeable gun store. I don't recommend a big box store. I don't I won't name any names, but there's local gun stores here that will more, be more than happy to help you pick out the correct ammunition for your gun. I always wear eye and ear protection. Um, I always recommend also that you wear a baseball cap. And the reason everybody asks, so why do you want that? When you have a pair of safety glasses on and you're on a firing range, someone besides you may be shooting and their, their gun is ejecting a hot piece of brass coming out of that gun. And sometimes I have had it go down behind my glasses and burn my eye. So I always suggest wearing a hat and it deflects the, the brass off the away from my face. So it's not so much that the brass is that dangerous to you, but it may cause you to have a negligent discharge. Uh, this should go without saying, but I'm gonna say it. Never use alcohol or drugs before or while shooting. Be aware that certain types of guns and many shooting activities require additional safety precautions. Now I'm going to read something that, that is very important. Uh, it's called a gun owner's responsibility. Americans enjoy a right that citizens of many other countries do not, the right to own firearms. But with that right comes responsibility. It is the gun owner's responsibility to store, operate, and maintain his or her firearm safely. It is the gun owner's responsibility to ensure that unauthorized and untrained individuals cannot gain access to his or her firearms. It is also the gun owner's responsibility to learn and follow all applicable laws that pertain to the purchase, possession, and use of firearms in his or her jurisdiction. Guns are neither safe or unsafe by themselves. When people practice responsible gun ownership, firearms are safe. 
So now we'll move into home storage. There's one rule to storing again safely and securely. You must be sure that unauthorized persons don't have access to the gun. There are many storage options available to choose from depending on your personal situation. One is a trigger lock, and I can show this here. It's a simple lock that you can either run through the chamber here, which locks it up, which prevents anything from even someone closing. It will not go into battery to keep any keep it safe. Uh, also, plastic cases such as this and fabric cases are a form of storage. This has a place that can be locked, which helps. Last, the strong boxes and metal gun cases. Metal gun cases offer portable storage like fabric or plastic cases, but have a much greater security. Strong boxes are similar, but can be mounted for permanent attachment. Some people even mount these things, you know, by their bedside. Some people mount them inside their vehicles. Uh, a lot of them have, uh, are very elaborate. They have a biometric lock on them where you simply lay your hand on it and it reads your fingerprints and pops the door open. Also moving on to home safety and storage, locking steel gun cabinets. Locking steel cabinets are lighter than a gun safe. Their simple locking mechanisms and lack of insulation also reduces costs, making them much more affordable. Basically, we're talking about more or less a, a lockable filing cabinet here. Gun safes are the most safe. Uh, safes possess locks that prevent a gun from being handled or loaded, upholstered interior and gun racks to protect the finish of your firearms and serve as effective theft defer, deterrent. There are many makes and models of gun safes, so it's important to think about the cost as well as the amount of firearms you own or plan to purchase in the future. Safes come in different sizes, gauges of steel, locking mechanisms, level of fire resistance, warranties, shelf and rack configurations, and exterior color and finishes. All these factors are things to consider and will determine a safe price. Safes can get very large, heavy, and expensive, but are the most secure gun storage option available. Moving along, understanding the types of guns and their parts. Two basic types of firearms exist. One type is a long gun, such as a rifle or a shotgun. The other type is a pistol. To understand how a gun works, you must first understand the gun's action. The action is a group of moving parts used to load, fire, and unload a gun. We have different types of actions for long guns. Um, we have a bolt action, a lever action, pump action, semi-automatic action, or a falling block action. Typical long gun parts include a stock, a safety, the bolt handle, trigger guard, trigger, barrel, muzzle. On a shotgun down below, similar things, uh, basically on this has a hinge release which, which breaks the action open to load and unload. Types of pistols. We have a single action revolver, a double action revolver, and we have semi-automatic pistols. Now we can also have double action and single action semi-automatic pistols as well. Semi-automatic pistol and revolver parts. You'll see the same, a lot of the same names of, um, on a pistol and a revolver. Both have a muzzle, both have a barrel, uh, both have a frame, both have a trigger, both have a trigger guard, both have grips. Uh, some semi-automatics have hammers, exposed hammers, some don't, but the revolver has a hammer. Some of them, some of the revolvers have, uh, have hidden hammers as well. Uh, typically revolvers have an ejector rod that assists in unloading the, the firearm. Uh, revolvers will also have a cylinder release latch. On a semi-automatic, -auto you have a magazine release, a slide stop, the slide itself, and a safety sometimes. 
magazines or clips, as some people call them. And I'm not, I don't care which one you call them. I've, I've called them both all my life, so it doesn't matter to me. But a magazine, by their definition, is a storage device designed to hold cartridges prior to insertion into the firing chamber. It is important to know what type of magazine your gun has to ensure you properly load and unload prior to usage, storage, or cleaning. The location of the magazine will vary depending, depending on the action, model, and make of the gun. Various types of magazines exist, but the two most common are box magazine, which typically you'll see in some rifles, or tubular magazines. Excuse me, I said that backwards. Box magazines are some these here. This is a box magazine. Or a tubular magazine is what's typically found on some rifles and shotguns. Moving to ammunition. It is important to understand and select the proper ammunition or ammo for your firearm. Failing to do so can cause serious <clears throat> damage or injury. Most firearms have the cartridge designation stamped on the barrel or the receiver. Ammo is fired when the gun's firing pin hits the ammo's primer. This causes a spark from the primer to ignite the gunpowder. As the powder burns, it creates high pressure gas that causes the case to expand, forming a seal and pull, pushes the bullet down the barrel. Ammo is generally classified by caliber, which is defined by the diameter of the barrel of your gun. Smaller calibers tend to produce less recoil, while larger calibers transfer more energy to the point of impact, which tends to produce more recoil. Sights. Sights are devices used to assist in aligning and aiming of your firearm. There are different types of sights available for your gun. Most common is iron sights. Iron sights, also known as open sights, are the most commonly used sights used on pistols and rifles. Open iron sights consist of a square notch rear and a front blade. Optical sights, such as some people call them scopes, uh, many rifles and sometimes pistols, shooters opt to use optical sights. Uh, again, pistols are becoming more and more popular using optical sights. There are two main groups of optics, telescopic and reflexive. Reflexive are the type that are going, that most people are going with pistols now. What to expect at the range? Uh, most ranges, especially any formal range, will have a range safety officer. Um, whose job is to supervise shooters, enforce the rules, and handle any problems that may occur. The RSO has absolute authority on the range. Range commands that you may hear. Two of the most important range commands are cease fire and commence firing. Commence firing is a command given to tell everyone it's safe to shoot. Cease fire is used whenever all shooting must stop. Anyone on the range can call cease fire. Here are the steps to take if a ceasefire is called. Number one, stop shooting immediately. Take your finger off the trigger and wait for further instruction. If I, if, and I'm going to demonstrate here. If you hear ceasefire, ceasefire, especially if they're behind you, don't turn around like this and say, what? You know, always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction with your finger off the trigger. Uh, number two, empty the chamber and lock the action open, which you do. Straight here. Number three, keep your hands off the firearm and step away from the firing line. If someone has ha had a, a squib load or a some sort of uh, ammunition malfunction on the range, you might want to step back away from it and let the range safety officer go to that person and clear their gun. Okay. When you go to the range, please don't show up with a plastic shopping bag full of your gun and your ammunition. Get a small backpack or a, some sort of duffel bag that has a little bit of uh, strength to it. So you need some sort of gun case. Always make sure you have some sort of ear protection and eye protection and the ammunition designed for your firearm. Some ranges have targets for sale uh, or you can bring your own, um, but 
to check with the range before you go. After you shoot your gun, and you should do this after every use, is you should clean your gun. Now that you know more about your gun and have taken it to the range for target practice, and it is unloaded and safely stored, it is important to know how to clean and maintain your gun. Cleaning and maintaining your gun preserves the functionality and value while keeping them safe and accurate. The effort and attention you put into maintaining your firearms will pay off in peace of mind that your guns will do what you need them to do. There are lots of rifle and pistol cleaning kits available. Lastly, uh, we'll talk about some NRA training courses. Now that you've got the basics, NRA offers a variety of training courses for beginner, intermediate, and advanced shooters. Pistol, rifle, shotgun, muzzle loader, safety, and personal protection and reloading courses are all available and taught from the leading experts on gun use NRA certified instructors. To find a course near you, please visit www.nrainstructors.org. Now's the time for someone to ask questions. I've got a question if, uh, if anybody uh, doesn't have one first. Uh, do you have any tips as far as storing ammo? Because I've heard different things. Some people will vacuum seal their ammo if they're going to keep it for a few years and they're not expecting to use it. Some people just say, you know, put it in a, in a good solid ammo can and it's, it's good to go. From the manufacturers that I've spoke with, keep your ammunition in a clean original box that it came in, stored in a, in a metal case in a cool, dark area, not cold, not hot. Temperature, or, you know, other than moisture, the, your, your basement probably would be the best because it keeps a uh, more constant temperature. Um, but the, the humidity in the basement might be might negate that, but but a cool, dark area is the best place to, to store your ammunition. Vacuum sealing it, it may work. I, I I I go through it so much I never have to worry about that. So but but I'm not saying it's not a good idea. I just don't know. One one of the arguments that I was reading, people were claiming that the vacuum sealing would knock primers loose. I, that seems like that would that's kind of far fetched, but I guess it it could happen. But well, I, I mean, again, the quality of the ammunition may dictate that. Also, uh, I've bought ammunition, some really cheap ammunition, um, foreign made ammunition, uh, and the primers fell out of the cartridge before I, as I was getting them out of the box, brand new out of the box. So. I, that, that might be where that's coming from. Um, personal opinion, if, if the vacuum sealant pulls the primer out, it was probably going to fall out anyway. Um, so. And, and then another thing about storage, just some horror stories that I, I really didn't think of until recent years. I read some, some stories of things happening where people would have similar size ammo and uh, I guess, for example, put a 357 and a 38 or something along those lines. So uh, it's keeping things separate in a, a way that you know that what it is. That's that's that's, cool. that's the that's the reason for always keeping the ammunition in the, the original box it came in. Uh, it, you know, don't throw it all in a bag. And and, uh, and I, a good example of that I was on a range one time, and I was doing some malfunction drills, and, and I was shooting a forty caliber, and was just picked up some ammunition off the ground and picked up a nine millimeter. Uh, cartridge inserted it it tried to fire I and mean, it's close enough that it 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 but it it didn't work exactly like it's supposed to but so yeah you really need to be careful with ammunition as you know keeping it in the original box so you know that it goes for what it goes for um shotgun shells are notorious for someone will uh drop a 20 gauge round down a 12 gauge barrel and it'll, the the 20 gauge will go down the barrel so far and then they'll, they, they'll forget about it and put a 12 gauge in and and cause a catastrophic event there uh plug barrel so yeah you got to be really careful there. ammunition should always also be stored away from your firearms uh, in a perfect world we would all have two gun safes and we keep our firearms in one safe and, and the ammunition in the other um most of us can't legitimately do that so um but you try to you would try to keep your front your 
firearms locked in one place and your ammunition stored in another locked cabinet or some sort if you can. Good question. And, and you have a question here that came in the chat from Joyce. Uh, she's over in Lee County. Yeah. What size caliber would you recommend for an absolute beginner to keep pests out of the garden? Uh, well, I won't get into keeping pests out of the garden, but uh, I typically recommend a 22 caliber uh, for a beginner with anything. Uh, you have less recoil. Uh, you learn to shoot correctly and, and don't get gun shy uh, for lack of a better term and then you can step up to a bigger caliber as you feel like you need to some pests are bigger than others hey, hey ralph uh while you're on the beginner uh subject i'm going to throw another one at you um what would you prefer uh with a beginner uh either a uh, a revolver in that 22 or a semi-automatic or does that, it matter? Personally, uh, in in our we 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 demonstrate with both when we're training, uh, and let the let the person decide for themselves. Uh, there's some really good uh, twenty two revolvers. There's some really good twenty two semi autos. Um, again, it all depends on the strength of the person in their in their their hand grip, the strengths. Uh, sometimes the sometimes the revolvers are a little hard. To operate, or especially if they're double action, uh, the semi-autos are a little easier in, in that aspect. So, yeah, I would I, I would recommend they try both and go from there. And I would think that if if someone is looking to purchase one to go to a range that would uh, would offer several uh, several models, several designs. Absolutely. brands calibers uh that they could that they could rent those i know there's several ranges in the region uh that they can that they could rent a, a firearm for a few rounds and uh, and try that out themselves correct that is very correct uh, and it's I, I try to explain that to to our students I, I would much much rather you come without a gun to our range and try some different firearms before you make that purchase because once you make that purchase it's a used gun and you know it's nobody's going to take it back for the same price that you paid for it so um it's it's really a good idea to try out before you purchase exactly and i, I know of a few range uh, i know a few shops that'll have a range that they'll even knock a few a uh, few dollars of percentage off or something like that if you purchase that uh, that uh, firearm from them so absolutely that's a good one as well that's a good good deal. Sure. Uh, yeah. We actually have another question that came through on the chat. What is a good model that doesn't have a lot of recoil? So uh, that comes from the same person uh, about the beginner. So okay. Again, uh, the twenty-two caliber uh, rimfire guns are the are the best to start with. Uh, I will not pick a model for you. Uh, back to your comment. Uh, go to the range that, that you could try some of these firearms out and pick one that fits your hand. Usually uh, anyone can fire anything if the gun fits their hand. Uh, if you get a gun that's too small for your hand or too big for your hand, it, it causes problems for you. So finding the right gun with the right fit. And a lot of the semi-autos nowadays come with uh, different grip panels that allow you to adjust the grip for your particular hand. So I hope I, I hope that answered that question. We're uh, we're kind of in a three county or maybe four county area. Okay. Do you have any if somebody want to go to a range, I mean how far are they going to have to travel to to get to a range? <sighs> My experience is there's several in the Tri-City area. Um, there's, a, there's a range uh, opened up in, I think it's in Dix, Dickinson County, uh, and I don't have the name of it in front of me, but uh, um, I'm sure if, uh, uh, if you get on Facebook or, 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 or Google it or, or you know, it, it, uh, it'll come up. But I know there's, there's, uh, there's several good ranges in the Tri-City area that I, that I visit. 
I think the one in Dickinson County, if I'm not mistaken, they're affiliated with Spearhead Trails. I think they are. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think they're in the Honey Camp area, if folks know where that is. It's uh, you, you make a ride on 72 as you're headed from Pound to uh, to Clintwood, and it's up in that that area. I've never been there, but I think it's an indoor range. I think it's pretty pretty high tech. Okay, I, I'm I've been wanting to go and just haven't had the opportunity. And as uh, far as the Kentucky side goes on that uh, field, uh, I do know there's one uh, uh, in Prestonsburg, and I know there's one in London. Those are two that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Speaking of, of indoor, um, and, and I guess this is a shameless plug for me, but we're starting to do something uh, with that we'll be able to do some training indoors. Uh, it's a product called ultimate training munitions. Um, and we take a real firearm and we convert it over. It's, it's not a permanent conversion. It can be changed back to your, your live ammunition at any time. But the ultimate training munitions, I don't know if I can get this close enough, you can see, but it's a not, this particular one is a nine millimeter and it fires a plastic projectile uh, that can be used indoors uh, with no hearing protection. You do, you do. It is required that you wear eye protection because of it is firing a projectile. But it's a less than lethal uh, round. I won't say it's. I won't say it's completely safe. It would hurt if it hurts if it hits you. But but it's a uh, it's a really neat item that we think is going to be a game changer for our training operation. So. We'll put up, a, at the end, Phil, put up my contact information if you want to come try it out. 